Let me read you a passage from the Holy Arch Wiki, written by the architect himself. We are the Archedicts, humble servants of the Arch Linux. Wielding power misunderstood by many, our ways seem ancient, but our philosophy is clear. Embrace the KISS principle, keep it simple, and dive deep into these pages. You might emerge a changed user. All right, let's step out of the temple for a moment because behind the jokes and the memes, Arch Linux has a real philosophy. A philosophy that people either swear by or swear at. And today I've revealed a mindset to conquer it without frustration. I'm Oscar, the super user, and today we'll be diving into the interesting world of Arch Linux. In the past, I really couldn't see the advantages of a system which could break on you at any moment. So after some trouble with it, I quickly removed it and went back to the comfort of some other distribution. But let me tell you that I have been using it wrong, that there is a mental framework which you must adopt to not be led astray and feel frustrated with Arch. Today's video is aimed at people curious about Arch but are too afraid to try it or people who have felt burnt by it in the past. Or even if you are totally new, I think you can find value on how to approach working with this operating system if you dare begin with it. Now, don't get me wrong. Arch Linux is definitely not an OS for everybody. It is quite unwieldy if what you want to do is just use your computer. But for specific user profiles such as hobbyists, power users, or just outright nerds, it's glorious. Hopefully for those who would never use Arch, at least the video is entertaining. So with that said, you can take the blue pill. The story ends, you click off the video and believe whatever you want to believe about Arch Linux. Uh, but you take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Advantages of Arch Linux Arch Linux is a 100% community-driven distribution, so no big enterprise behind its development. Its community of users help shape what the distro is and how it can fulfill their needs. It is also a very minimal distro that lets you configure anything you want from the beginning. You decide what goes onto your system from the moment you want to install it. You decide what initial packages and services will run and what bootloader and desktop environment you want. Since it is a rolling release distribution, which means that you update every time new software is released, you'll be on the bleeding edge of package versions, with the latest software reaching your computer with one simple command. So unlike Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora and many others, your system is never still. You also have access to one of the biggest software repositories, the Arch User Repository, also known as the AUR, where you can obtain some of the most exotic, specific, and useful packages for your system. You can set up certain applications very easily, which otherwise could have been extremely hard, such as DaVinci Resolve. But all this power comes with a great responsibility because you are the sole commander of your computer and how it gets upgraded. You are the chief, the big kahuna, el jefe, and you, and only you, will be responsible for your system's prosperity or demise. But know that you are not alone, for the Arch Linux community has created the best Linux documentation on the entire internet, the Arch Wiki. You can think whatever you want about Arch itself, but I believe everybody recognizes the Arch Wiki as an incredible resource. This most sacred text written by fellow Arch addicts contains most of the solutions to any problem you might have, not only on Arch, but also many times applicable to other distributions as well. That's how good it is. So even if you are using Linux Mint, you can find a lot of value by reading certain articles there. And finally, Arch is a very efficient distribution. It is very lightweight and makes for a killer gaming or editing machine. I have been using Arch to play my games, work on this YouTube channel and do my day job all on one machine. Now, you might ask yourself, how do you manage to pilot Arch daily with such a mission critical machine? That takes us to our next point. Keep it simple, stupid. 
The mantra of Arch is to breathe. Yes. Breathe now. Breathe with me. Come on. Wow, I bet you feel better already. So this silly idea rings true with Arch. You don't want to be hasty. You don't want to be updating every five minutes. The dangers of Arch that many new users face is that they have all this freedom, all these choices, all the options to tinker with, and you end up balking your system because you get too excited. Many treat Arch like a toy, and that's fine if you are conscious about that. But if you think that Arch will not break because you decided to install KDE Plasma and GNOME together, well, that's on you. If you want to play with Arch, then please be my guest. Just don't run it on a production machine then. But if you want to make Arch work for you as a daily driver on a production machine, then you must embrace the KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. You must know what you want out of your system. Do you want to work? Do you want to play games? Do you want to edit videos? Do you want to set up a Minecraft server? Keep that goal in mind. Make your system work for you. At some point, you'll have to experiment to learn about certain things, but try to do it with some guidance from the Arch Wiki or some YouTube tutorials. Go safe and learn on another machine if need be, or have your system prepared with snapshot rollback if you feel you really want to go there. Also, since you'll be getting updates almost every day, you don't have to update if you don't need to. Let me say this again. Just because you can update doesn't mean you should do so immediately. The thing about being on the bleeding edge is that not only you get the latest features, but you also get the latest bugs as well. Sometimes updates can break your system. Now, this is rare, let me emphasize that. But it's true that something can interfere with something else during an update. So the deal is that if you wait a few days before updating, chances are you won't even see the bugs because they'll be fixed by then. It's always a good idea to bookmark the Arch website to check the news section if they announce any breakage of packages before you even update. I myself let my updates accumulate until the weekend and it's the only moment I update. And even if I need to exceptionally update midweek to install a certain package I need, you can do so generally with little risk. Also, a word of warning for the AUR. For as great as it is, these are packages maintained by anybody and not the Arch contributors. This means anybody can upload packages to this repo with its pros and cons. You probably heard about malware and other nasty things on the AUR, and those are true. It's not rampant, mind you, but you have to exercise some caution by making sure that the package you want has comments on it verifying its trust and that the package has a lot of votes. You might also want to learn to verify what the package script will do as well in case it does any fishy stuff. You can open the package build script and read the exact instructions it is going to do. That is why I really recommend to rely on the AUR as a last resort. The priority for me are the official repos. If the app is not there, then Flatpak. And finally, last resort, AUR. So with the mindset in place, I am going to propose a learning path to help you go from Arch Noob to Arch Pro. It won't replace dedicated learning that you'll have to do on your own afterwards, but it will give you a nice head start. And overall, I think we all love learning on this channel. To build that confidence and to keep you from nuking your system, you're going to want patience and solid problem solving skills, which is exactly where today's sponsor comes in. Brilliant can help you develop your problem solving skills and scratch that itch to learn even more. I've been a brilliant user for quite some time now, and I must say that it has helped me tremendously to understand the fundamentals of programming languages. I don't have a programming background myself, and Brilliant makes it so accessible to learn on your phone or computer with its thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and data analysis. You know, brain tickly topics. I just get excited just mentioning them. I'm currently getting into Python, but if your experience is null, they even have a course of thinking in code, which really helps you understand how programming languages are structured. 
If you want to try it out, you can learn for free by using my custom link or scanning the QR code you see on screen. And because Brilliant partnered with us, they're also providing you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which unlocks unlimited daily access to everything they offer. Go check them out. You might surprise yourself with what you can do. Thank you, Brilliant, for the opportunity. The learning path. We'll eventually dive into some of these things in future videos, but I like to inspire you to research and learn these things before trying to use Arch as a daily driver. I'll also include links to the Arch Wiki articles to learn more in the description box. So first off, the installation. So there are two ways to install Arch Linux. You have the first, which is a rite of passage, which is to install the OS from scratch following the Arch Wiki's article installation guide. This is one of the reasons why so many Arch users brag about their OS because installing Arch in this way is certainly a bit challenging. Uh, not much, mind you, if you have a good attention span and you're not in a hurry, uh, then it's honestly quite easy. The Arch Wiki does a fantastic job in holding your hand and you should be done in an hour for your first time. But keep in mind, you'll be building a system entirely from a terminal screen, setting up the bootloader, the directory mounts, and setting up the services you want, all from scratch. It's super cool and a great weekend project, to be honest. Uh, I do recommend that any Arch user goes through this process at least once in their lives because you learn so much about how the operating system is built. But you don't have to do that now. You can get to the fun bit, which is using the OS, by the second method, which is using the Arch install script. Now, don't let anyone make fun of you for using this, honestly, but this script basically automates the whole installation using a TUI or terminal user interface, where you just specify what you want. Nowadays, I just use the script because it does exactly what I need and I have a fully functional Arch system in a matter of minutes. Two, learn Pac-Man. No, not that one. Pac-Man is Arch Linux's package manager. Seriously, like take some time to learn about Pac-Man's flags, which are the different options and operations it can do. You should know how to install packages, remove them and do full system updates. That's basic. But you should also learn that you rarely have to use Pac-Man-SY if, if ever, because that can lead to partial system updates, which can break on you. Sometimes you also want to pin a package version. You want the rest of your system to update except a certain package for whatever reason. Maybe the new version is buggy and the package doesn't work. So you just go back, you install the previous version and you pin it. And that way you can make sure that that package stays on the version that works for you. Three, learn about package maintenance. Installing and removing packages is nice, but what do we do with all the waste they leave behind? Yup, at some point you have to learn how to clean up a bit. There is something called the package cache, where old package versions are stored. This allows you to downgrade a specific package, just like I mentioned before, in case you need to use the old one, but at some point it will keep filling up, taking away disk space. So maybe you want to clear that out every few months. There is a rather easy way by using a script included in the Pac-Man Contrib package, and you can read more about it in the linked article in the description. Sometimes the system even leaves behind orphan packages, which are those that maybe were installed as a dependency at one point, but they are no longer needed because you removed other packages. You can use this command to list these orphan packages and decide to remove them. Fourth, have system snapshots from the beginning. When you install Arch, I do recommend you do it with the ButterFS file system and set up Snapper to generate system snapshots, which allow you to roll back in time in case you break something. If you are using the Arch install script, it can do this for you. If you're using the manual install, I encourage you to look up the corresponding articles linked below. This can be a lifesaver because you'll be able to boot up into an earlier version of your system right from boot up in the grub screen, which is the bootloader I recommend having for snapshots. So even if your system is unbootable, you can boot up from a prior snapshot. Fifth, how to ch root. This final step is maybe the most complicated, but if you learn it, you'll be able to fix your system 
most of the time. Say for some reason you messed up Grub and now you can't even access your snapshots. You can do this with another Linux bootable USB drive. It can be the Arch ISO or even the Ubuntu ISO. The goal here is to enter your broken installation as root using this other working system. Once in, you can run commands inside the broken system as usual and fix your Grub bootloader. I'll also link to the corresponding articles in the description. Finally, document what you do. This is kind of optional and subjective, but I do believe in its usefulness. The more you do on your system, the less you remember what's going on under the hood. You don't remember what commands you run or what services you enabled. Now, there are ways to know and check, of course, but wouldn't it be nice to have a master document which tells you outright what your system has? I use Obsidian for my note taking, and I have a dedicated Arch Linux setup note with lists of packages, services, and other tidbits I want for my Arch system. Not only does it help me keep track of what my Arch installation has, but it also makes installing a fresh system in the future a breeze just by copy pasting the commands and instructions I wrote and saved. This, of course, is up to you because it is not a system integrated feature. It's not essential, but I think it is the icing on the cake for a nice controlled arch system. Uh, now that I think of it, I wonder if there is a Linux distro that actually forces you to write down what goes on it. Phew, that was a lot to compress in these 15 minutes, to be honest, but hopefully for those curious, you might find courage to dive in. And for those who've had their minds fixed on never using Arch, well, I've probably confirmed your thoughts. Uh, but for either of you, I wish it was a fun summary of this infamous operating system. As always, I'm open to comments, debates, suggestions. Just be polite and respectful, please. For any Linux distro, be it Linux from scratch or Zorin OS, great power comes with great responsibility. <laughs>